my name is Jason Spiromilio. I'm the telescope scientist for the European Extremely Large Telescope. I've been very lucky. I haven't actually uh, made career decisions. Sort of things fell into place, one project after another. So I, I really haven't picked something to do. Yeah, I think my PhD supervisor, Peter Mikkel at Imperial College, uh, taught me uh, how to do physics and how to be a physicist. And uh, Dave Allen, a senior astronomer at the anglo australian Observatory, my first job after my PhD, taught me how to be an experimental physicist. It's uh, the big part of one's career is learning how to do the job. I think research is, is the best job one can possibly have. Um, you, you, you don't get to um, choose uh, everything you do. It's highly competitive. So you have to make the waves, ride the surf all the time. You have a, a continuous uh, challenging environment. Uh, it's highly, highly competitive, uh, uh, but at the same time immensely rewarding. So I think it is tightly linked. It's not that you have a job and a lifestyle uh, that are decoupled. Oof. Um, I was, uh, after my PhD, I went to Australia. Uh, I applied for a job and I, I, I got a job in Australia. Uh, but after about five or six years there, I felt that my Australia was too far away for, from Europe where my soul belonged. So I applied for a job at the European Southern Observatory and there I uh, first was an infrared astronomer, instrument scientist for one of the instruments for the VLT. Uh, after that I, uh, I moved on to commissioning the telescopes and uh, after a while, uh, 10 years in Chile, I ended up being the director of the observatories there. So I've had many options, many, many things that have happened to end up in the current job, but it's also been a, a 30 year career. So it isn't that I suddenly got this job uh, from uh, outside the field. Uh, is emails, meetings, it's the same that pretty much everybody has. Um, but it's a fun day. You actually interact with super clever people. Uh, you uh, continuously trying to find places in your thinking that are wrong. You're trying to work out uh, how the telescope will work, what will actually go wrong. Uh, have you been thinking along the right path? And it's a perpetual process of questioning yourself. So the, the typical day is, is like everybody else, is trying to uh, organize your work such that you can get some things done. There's a bit of coding, there's a bit of uh, analysis. Um, but a lot of discussing with other people about what is going on. Well, the telescope scientist is responsible for uh, taking the, the machine as, as built and changing it into a telescope that astronomers can use. It's, it's a little bit like um, everything that we do is, is a prototype. It's done for the first time. This is not industrial product uh, telescopes. So um, it's, it's a bit like starting a, a television station when the only thing that's ever been done before is radio. So in principle, everything is, is known. It's radio waves across the ether and uh, a broadcast and a receiver. But anybody who would think about that problem would accept that it's not obvious how you go about it. So a lot of the stuff that we do is trying to do things for the first time with all the uncertainties and all the uh, pleasures of finding out how to actually do it. In, in the particular telescope, there's, uh, the, the, in the extremely large telescope, the challenges are, are enormous because we're dealing with 798 segments that all have to be phased. There's all kinds of challenges of that sort, but they're, they're technical things and you're surrounded by a team of extremely competent people and you're collaborating with it. The, the real challenge is to get um, everybody focused on the right problem as opposed to the problem that they may have wanted 
to focus on because they found it more interesting. And that, that requires cajoling a lot of super, super smart people into working on what you think is important. And they're doing the same thing to you. So it's not a, it's not a one way street. Oh, I, I can read, uh, I can write, and I'm willing to work. And it has some qualification. Um, I think I can read so that I understand what somebody else has written. And I can write so that somebody else understands what I intended to say. And I'm willing to work such that the others succeed. Uh, and if you have that combination in the workplace, then by default you're going to be successful because communication is working and you have, you have a team. And I think this applies whether you're doing research, whether you're doing anything. I took physics and maths were the only two things I knew how to, I was any good at. I have a bachelor's degree in physics and a doctorate in astrophysics, both from the Imperial College in, in London. That's it. Uh, in research, you learn all the time. So it's not that you're going to as ever stop learning. But training is a different thing to, to learning. So there are skills that you, you develop, a lot of these things are things that you, you learn, not necessarily on the job, but you, you, you teach yourself because you need to have certain uh, skills along the way. But in terms of formal training, uh, I have to confess that uh, after I, uh, I, I finished my PhD, I decided I was never going to sit another exam in my entire life and have largely managed to do that, apart from a driving test in Australia. I have managed to, to not ever sit an exam, and I am uh, happy for that. Um, in 1998, uh, we discovered the uh, acceleration of the expansion of the universe, which was uh, an incredible uh, discovery. That was a worldwide team. It wasn't just a, it wasn't an, an ESO result exclusively. Um, also in 1998, uh, we had the first light of the uh, first of the eight meter telescopes, uh, UT1 on, on Paranal, and I was there uh, for that. And in 1998, my son was born. So it was a pretty good year. 1998 was, was a pretty good year, I must admit. I have it. I have the dream job. Um, it's, it's a very long road, and you should have fun along the way. So if you're not enjoying it every single day, then don't do it. Um, the time is not going to come back, and in this field, at least in terms of uh, getting a, uh, an, the ultimate job in, in academia, statistically, you are extremely unlikely to, to make it. it. It requires a colossal amount of luck. It's not only that you are good at something, that you know how to do it. None those are insufficient to get you to the end. So you have to enjoy the ride. If you don't enjoy the ride, don't, don't start. And when you stop enjoying the ride, get off. I think anybody who goes uh, into a university lab uh, in the summer and spends time either working with data or working with apparatus uh, will have uh, both an experience that they uh, can relate to in terms of what their future career would be like and also uh, provide some uh, confidence to people who may be giving them the opportunity to move forwards that they know what they're going to be faced with. So I would say just go into any uh, lab in the summer and say, I'm here, can I help? Yeah.